Let us begin our service with these words of comfort from God's words. From Luke's Gospel, chapter 1. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from heaven will break upon us to shine on those who live in darkness and to guide our feet into the way of peace. From the first letter of Peter, chapter 1. Praised be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, he gave us a new birth into a living hope. From Paul's first letter to the Corinthians chapter 2, things beyond our seeing, things beyond our hearing, things beyond our imagining have all been prepared by God for those who love him. Finally, from this psalm, from Psalm 124, our help is in the name of the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. We meet to remember and give thanks for John Mayer, known to many of us, probably most of us, as Johnny, who has gone on before us into the world of God's eternal light. And while we're assured that Johnny is beyond pain and suffering, we feel the sadness of the parting, particularly as it's come so unexpectedly and suddenly. And our loving loving sympathy goes out to Aileen, David, Barbara, and their families. Death is always a mystery. Whenever it comes, it is never the end, but is always a beginning. We know this because Jesus went down into the darkness of death and came back from it like the sun in full strength. The death and resurrection of Jesus lead to the glory of the morning. And trusting in him, we follow him through the door of death into a life of perfection and peace, the life of God himself. Let us pray. Almighty God, in mystery you created all things. You made us in your own image. You love us with an everlasting love. Grant us the assurance of your loving presence with us now. Bear us gently in your gracious hands and bring us in our sorrow the comfort for which our hearts cry out. Eternal God, we come to you because the friend we knew and loved has died. And our hearts are cold and our minds perplexed. Whatever we may be thinking and feeling, we know that you will understand. For you made us. And in your son Jesus, you shared our life and experience. Accept us as we are. Forgive us for our lack of faith. Inspire us in us a living hope. Lord Jesus, as we bow in the presence of death, Stand within the shadows beside us to bring the light of your deathless love. Lord, to whom can we go but to you? Your words are words of eternal life. Gracious God, help us to listen for your word. Console us in our trouble so that in turn we may be able to console others in any trouble of theirs and to share with them the consolation we receive from you that together we may find light in our darkness and faith in the midst of doubt. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us worship God. Let us uh, sing to his praise and glory the words of the familiar psalm, The Lord, my shepherd, and we'll stand to sing.
understand that uh, some of you are, because there's so many people here, uh, some of you are using hymn books. Apologies if uh, you didn't get the number of the, of the hymn. Uh, Elizabeth alerted me to that, so when we have the next hymn, I'll let you know. So apologies for that. I want to uh, turn now to the, the tributes uh, for Johnny. There, there have been several, but first of all, uh, a tribute from uh, Barbara and the, and the family. Johnny Mayer was born in Paisley to Jack and Jean Mayer and was their only child. Johnny lived in Loch Winnick his whole life. He grew up in the prefabs in Brayhead and went to Loch Winnick Primary School. He was very proud of the fact that during a flu outbreak, he was one of two students who got 100% attendance that year. In fact, he said he never had a cold until this year, 77 years and never a sniffle, quite some achievement. Johnny spent his whole childhood out and about with his friends in Loch Winnick, playing up the 50 passages, swimming in the Calder, exploring the countryside. One of his best friends was Gavin Pratt, and I'll be sharing Gavin's memories of Johnny a bit later. Growing up together, they were inseparable joining the Masons together, golfing together, reciting Burns together at many a Burns supper. The Hogmanay parties at each other's houses were always fun with Johnny loving to show off his singing voice. Johnny met Aileen in 1967 when they were both out for a night out in Largs. His friend liked Aileen's friend and said to Johnny that he could have the other one. <laughs> when Aileen turned round, it was love at first sight. They spent the evening together and enjoyed each other's company so much that Johnny ended up missing the last bus home and had to walk back from Largs to Loch Winnick. Quite some feet. That didn't put him off, though. He continued to see Aileen, and they were married three years later in 1970. There'll be more about Aileen, Johnny, and the family in a moment, but before that, I want to speak about his working life and the things he enjoyed doing away from work. Johnny worked for the Cooperage and often told stories of his lorry driving days where he drove all over Scotland delivering to various distilleries. He moved on to work with Allied Distillery in, at the Willow Yard in Beath where he was a foreman for many years. Johnny took voluntary redundancy from the Willow Yard after which he went on to work as a forklift truck driver, which he hated, and then as a trolley boy at Glasgow Airport. He loved working at the airport, meeting loads of people and enjoying the relaxed nature of the job. He ultimately decided to go self-employed, though, doing what he loved most, which was gardening. This was the very best career move he ever made. He enjoyed going to work every day, and even got his certifications in the use of pesticides and chainsaws. Whilst working as a gardener, he met the Luffs and started working at Lochside. Their grounds became his home from home. It was where he escaped to when things got too much for him and what kept him going through the winter months when the normal garden jobs weren't needed. We can't thank Kate, Keith, and their family enough for all the support they gave Johnny over the years, particularly when Aileen went into care. He truly loved the time he spent at Lochside, and even after he had to give up working there, he still went up and spent time wandering the grounds and enjoying the peace and quiet it brought him. Johnny eventually retired. However, even after his supposed retirement, he couldn't bring himself to fully stop working, and he still did grass cutting for a few favorite customers. Johnny was a past master with the Masons and a past patron of the Eastern Star. He took his involvement in both the Masonic and the Eastern Star very seriously and loved attending the meetings both home and away and supporting the community through the work that they do. Johnny loved singing and often used to use the novelty songs he knew to cheer up others around him most recently bringing laughter and smiles to both his wife Aileen and his sister-in-law Isabel in their care homes, entertaining the other residents and staff as well. 
Johnny had many hobbies in his life, including when he was younger, playing football. He played for the local football team. He also enjoyed fishing and learning karate. For a while, he also took up bowling with his dad at the Loch Winnick Bowling Club. His favorite hobby, however, was golf. Johnny played at Loch Winnick Golf Club and enjoyed taking part in the Saturday competitions. And he passed his, this love of golf on to his son David and in turn to his grandson Lucas. Like his father, Johnny was a keen gardener and loved pottering about in the, his greenhouse and ensuring his garden was full of color every year. He passed this love on to his daughter Barbara who loved spending time talking flowers and garden maintenance with her dad. He was a true oracle when it came to anything related to the garden. One of his other true loves was the life and works of Robert Burns. Johnny would spend hours learning Burns poems in readiness for the annual round of Burns suppers. He loved to perform and particularly loved, loved addressing the haggis and performing death and Dr. Hornbrook with Gavin, which had gotten down to an art form. In his later years, Johnny found a passion in nature and photography. He loved walking around the estate when the weather was fair, taking photos of the village, the countryside, and the local wildlife. He took great pleasure in sharing his photos every day on the Loch Winnick Past and Present Facebook site. Johnny also loved getting into technology learning how to use laptops, smartphones, and iPads in the last few years. He loved discovering new things to learn about, although he openly admitted that technology would often leave him stumped. And whenever he got stuck, he'd put in a call to his local IT support, namely the kids. During Johnny's childhood, he spent every summer in Macduff, visiting his grandparents and family. He loved his time there and the friendships he made. He would spend the summer swimming at the outdoor pool in Tarlair, climbing the Needle's Eye, playing down at the harbour, watching the fishing boats come in. He loved the annual gala day where they would have pillow fights, attempt to climb the, gre the greasy pole and take lifeboat trips round the shore. The memories of his childhood holidays always made him smile and he loved telling stories of all the adventures that he got up to during those times. Johnny loved his summer holidays. Every year when the kids were living at home, they would travel abroad, mainly to Spain, France, and Mallorca. One memorable holiday was when the family went to Castel Montgri in Esterte, Spain, on a camping holiday. They traveled there and back on a bus from Glasgow, taking a day and a half to get there. They liked it so much, they did it twice. Not at the same holiday. One of those trips turned into a bit of a disaster for Johnny though. The family were staying in a tent and Barbara got a dodgy tummy and with no toilet facilities in the tent, the unenviable task of emptying the bucket in the morning fell to Johnny, who in the process did his back in, with the result that both he and Barbara were bedridden for most of the holiday. Meanwhile, rather than waste a good holiday, Aileen and David went off to enjoy the sun and ice cream. And Barbara, who typed this, I'm sure there's not even a, a note of resentment in that. No. Not at all. <laughs> For the last 20 years, Johnny and Aileen traveled regularly to Bardolino on Lake Garda in Italy. They discovered Bardolino when they went to visit Barbara in Verona while she was working there back in 1998. And they fell in love with the place, going back year after year. He loved the people and the atmosphere of the small town going for daily walks along the lakeside and visiting all the different towns on the shores of the lake, as well as day trips to the Dolomites and Verona. And when the grandchildren came along, Johnny even loved going to the local amusement park, Gardaland, allowing for a bit of indulgence of his inner child. He also loved going to Florida, visiting all of the Disney and Universal parks and playing golf at the resort golf club. Even Aileen, who didn't golf, loved those outings as she was in charge of driving, driving the golf buggy around the course. And one of those trips to Florida, the family went to play crazy golf. From that point onwards, Johnny complained about every crazy golf course he came across because it didn't compare to how the Americans did it. 
Johnny's survived by his wife, Aileen, his children, David and Barbara, and his grandchildren, Andrew, Lucas, and Rebecca. Johnny's immediate family and his extended family brought him so much joy, and he loved researching his family tree and keeping in touch with family members both near and far. Friendships were extremely important to him, particularly over the last few years during COVID and afterwards. The hardest thing he ever had to do was to accept when Aileen's Alzheimer's progressed beyond his ability to cope with looking after her, that the best option for her was to be looked after in a care home. He found being on his own very lonely, particularly over the winter months. But he loved his frequent coffee catch-ups in the chip shop with the boys, as he called them, and his afternoon coffees round at the loch. These gave him much needed company and lifted his spirits. He had too many friends to mention and every one of them meant the world to him. But he was particularly close to Gavin Pratt, Bill Davey, Adrian Tharm and Malky Blair. And David and Barbara can't thank the Masonic Lodge enough for the support and friendship they offered Johnny. Masonic was extremely important to him and he took great pride in his membership. Over the years, he held multiple positions and loved every minute of it. He made lifelong friends that meant the world to him. And over the last year, the Lodge was literally a lifesaver, getting him back out and living, living life again and taking part in his much-loved burn suppers. Johnny loved life and loved helping others. He made, made friends easily, and once you were part of his circle, he would do anything for you. He loved a good debate and voiced his opinion on many topics, particularly those that impacted the village. Johnny loved people. He always had time for everyone and believed very much in the power of a smile. He would stop and talk to anyone and everyone, making new friends wherever he went. Barbara has asked me if I would read out a poem, and it's called Remember Me by Margaret Mead. To the living, I am gone. To the sorrowful, I will never return. To the angry, I was cheated. But to the happy, I'm at peace. And to the faithful, I have never left. I cannot speak, but I can listen. I cannot be seen, but I can be heard. So as you stand upon a shore, gazing at a beautiful sea, as you look upon a flower and admire its simplicity, remember me. Remember me in your heart, your thoughts and your memories of the times we loved, the times we cried, the times we fought, the times we laughed. For if you always think of me, I will never be gone. That was what the family asked uh, me to share. I also have another couple of stories. One uh, is a Graham Kerr story. And uh, he said, one winter many years ago, Johnny and Tom Hobbs decided to go down the loch As back then, it was frozen for many weeks. It was about nine o'clock in the evening. Not far down the ice, they heard the geese coming into land from the Kilburnie direction. At that moment, they heard someone further down the loch. It was Alex Kerr, ready with his gun to bring home a goose for Sunday dinner. Next thing, bang! And Alex shouts, fetch! To his dog, but the goose had landed nearer to Johnny and Tom. So they quietly picked up the goose and made a quick exit. All the while, Alex could be heard shouting to the dog, fetch, fetch. (laughs) Alex was never told that story, but says Graham, these three guys will be up above having a good old laugh about it now. And uh, Gavin Pratt has also shared his memories Summer months were spent up the 50 passages, the 50s, Castle Semple. It'll always be 50s to locals. Or 
Scudlin Trout in the Garfield Burn, where we would start at what is now the golf club house, golf club clubhouse, but then was the flag printing works. We would have a contest to see how many we could catch. You had to shout, got one, to be seen by the others for it to count. Or we'd go swimming up the glen. We would start at the Miller's Pool, then progress to the Woody and the Gurrets, quite dangerous pools. So you could say we were doing wild swimming before it became the fashion. Another place we played was in the Bar Castle, where you could still get in through a hole on the cycle track side. We would crawl through over all the fallen rubble and up through the, to the ground floor. There was no stair intact to go up any further, but you could get up to the top by going up through what would have been the Great Hall chimney where you could work your way up by placing one leg on one wall and the other on the opposite wall and make your way up to the top that way. There we would run around the top, no fears. When I drive by now and I look over it, it doesn't bear thinking about. When we were in the Life Boys, I stayed in Semple Avenue and Johnny stayed in the prefabs in Bray Head. So I would call in for him on the way. I would always be half an hour early because the Lone Ranger would be on. Johnny's mum and dad had a telly. Not many people had a telly then. We would watch it, then go to the Life Boys. Then they brought it out as a film in black and white. It was on at Johnny's The Palace Picture House, so we went to see it. The Lone Ranger was a US Marshal. He always wore a mask. His sidekick, Tonto, was an Indian, although nowadays we would use the term Native American. Chasing bank robbers, they were out in the wilds, sitting at a campfire. Tonto was saying to the Lone Ranger how unusual it was that a white man and an Indian could be best friends. And he's telling the Lone Ranger that in their culture, they'd cut their wrists and put them together, and they'd become blood brothers for life. No, we didn't do that, but we did the next best thing. When we were going home, we had to pass old Dr. Waitston's house where there was a big rose bush covered in thorns. So we picked a thorn each off the branch and scratched our thumbs till they bled and put them together. So we became blood brothers for life. We thought sepsis or blood poison just didn't enter our heads. We loved to go camping. One year we went to Arran where there was a campsite at Glen Rosa just outside Brodick. By the time we got off the ferry, you could hardly see in front of you for the mist the har. As we were making our way out of Brodock, we thought it would be better to find somewhere to camp for the night and then carry on next morning to Glen Rosa. So we set up camp in what we thought was the nearest field. In the morning, we were wakened by a policeman poking his head in the opening of the tent. Morning, boys. You can't camp here. When we were explaining we were only here for the night, that seemed to satisfy him. But when we got up and looked out, we understood why he'd wakened us. We pitched our tent on the grass right at the back door of the hotel. <laughs> a big part of Johnny's life was the Masonic Lodge for over 50 years and also the Eastern Star. He was the master in 1984 and again in 2001. He went on to be secretary of the lodge till his passing. We formed the Garthland Cronies a Burns group along with Bill Davis and Malky Blair and also members of the Lodge. The following year, Willie Gamble joined us, so we had the full package for a Burns supper, which used to take around the various venues to raise money for charity. We'd been doing that for about 15 years until COVID intervened. After things got back to some sort of normality, we started going back out again, but Johnny had to take a back seat to look after Aileen. As our condition deteriorated, Johnny had to make the heartbreaking decision to put Aileen into care, but it gave Johnny the time to come back to the lodge. I asked him if he fancied getting back together with our, Bur with our Burns double act, which we'd done before COVID. He readily agreed, so after a few run-throughs together, we performed it for the last time as it happened at Erskine Burns Supper on the Saturday before he passed away. Everything seemed fine, so it's come as a big shock to us all. I think we all echo the, the final words that, that Gavin said. 
and Johnny will be sorely missed. Gavin has asked if he could uh, recite the poem Old Lang Syne by Robert Burns. I'm going to ask him to do that now. It's been good to share with you some of the light-hearted memories of Johnny and I growing up here in Lochonach. We will all have our own fond memories of Johnny, so let's take time to quieten our hearts, bow our heads, as we think of those memories that we all share as we listen to the words of Robert Burns. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and all lang syne? And surely you'll be your pint stoop, and surely I'll be mine. And we'll tack a cup of kindness yet for old lang syne. We twa here run about the breeze and pooed the gowans fine. But we've wandered many a weary fit since all lang syne. We twa hae paddled in the burn fae morn and sun till dine, but seas between us braith he roared since all lang syne. And there's a hand, my trusty fear, and gie's a hand o' thine, and we'll tak a reck get wally wach for old lang syne. I want to share with you readings from the Bible which talk about our life as transients, but also of a hope that life continues with God, that our destiny is not, final destiny is not the grave, but is heaven with God. From the Old Testament, from the prophecy of Isaiah, the Lord God will destroy death forever. He will wipe away the tears from every face and throughout the world remove the indignities from his people. The Lord has spoken. On that day, people will say, see, this is our God. We've waited for him and he will deliver us. This is the Lord for whom we've waited. Let us rejoice and exult in his deliverance. Lord, you keep those of firm purpose untroubled because of their trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for he is an eternal rock. From the Psalms, Psalm 121, if I lift up my eyes to the hills, where shall I find help? My help comes only from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot stumble. He who guards you will not sleep. The guardian of Israel never slumbers, never sleeps. The Lord is your guardian, your protector at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will guard you against all harm. He will guard your life. The Lord will guard you as you come and go now and forevermore. And from the New Testament, from Paul's letter to the Romans. I reckon that the sufferings we now endure bear no comparison with the glory as yet unrevealed which is in store for us. In everything as we know, the Spirit cooperates for good with those who love God and are called according to His purpose. If God is on our side, who is against us? 
He did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How can he fail to lavish every other gift upon us? Who will bring a charge against those whom God has chosen? Not God who acquits. Who will pronounce judgment? Not Christ who died, or rather rose again. Not Christ who is at God's right hand and pleads our cause. Then what can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction or hardship? Can persecution, hunger, nakedness, danger or sword? We are being done to death for your sake all day long, as Scripture says, and yet throughout it all, overwhelming victory is ours through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that there's nothing in death or life, in the realms of spirits or superhuman powers, in the world as it is or the world as it shall be, in the forces of the universe, in heights or depths, nothing in all creation that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Finally, a gospel passage from the Gospel of St. John. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now, Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died but I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, she replied, I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. All of us who have known Johnny will have our memories to treasure and to share. How I remember Johnny myself, well, I'd hear the sound of his white van on the chuckies beside the manse, and then the sound of the lawnmower starting up, and then he'd be mowing the lawn, to the immense curiosity of our two cats. I would apologize to Johnny for them getting in the way or investigating his van, but he was a very patient and gentle person and never felt the cats would come to any harm. I felt reassured that he would look out for them if they were daft enough to get in the way of his van. And a number of good conversations with Johnny, particularly about the northeast of Scotland, where we both have connections and an affinity for. Like many of you, the swiftness and unexpectedness of Johnny's passing is difficult to take in. It's come as a great shock to us. It must be especially tough for Johnny's family David, Barbara, and the grandchildren. Lucas, so Andrew, Lucas, and Rebecca, who have lost their papa and gramps. And the challenge of the situation is greater because of Johnny's wife's Aileen's Alzheimer's. As a church community, we want to assure you of our continuing support for Aileen. And I know there are several other people in the village who visit your mum and try to help as much as we can. It's so hard to understand why Johnny has died when he seemed in such robust physical health. We understand as far as we can how difficult Johnny must have found it to see Aileen's health deteriorate and to have to make the heartbreaking decision to have her looked after in a care home instead of at home with him. I remember last summer, Aileen telling me how Johnny had been in seeing to some trees in the care home garden and seeing the evidence of his work whilst on a walk with Aileen and Aunt Arnold, who I was visiting with. 
I spoke about this later with Johnny and how it was great that he could use his practical skills to improve the surroundings for Aileen and the others there. Johnny was very humble about his work, but at the same time, he had very high standards as far as seeing that it was done properly. He was concerned. He clearly did enjoy his outdoor work, and even though quite a few of my conversations with him were about how things were with Aileen, and of course, there were some really tough times. My recollection of Johnny Mayer is of someone who was kind and positive and more often than not smiling. And that picture that's on the front of the order of service really captures it for me and I'm sure for many of you as well. Yes, I will certainly miss him along with you. One of the Bible readings I shared with you was the story of Lazarus. Lazarus was the brother of Mary and Martha. They were friends of Jesus who stayed in Bethany, a village not far from the city of Jerusalem. And we know that Jesus would stay there at his friends when he was visiting the city. We know he spent time enjoying the friendship they shared. And when Lazarus suddenly died, Jesus was deeply moved and affected by the death of his friend but probably not in the way we might expect. Jesus was upset. It's recorded in what is the shortest sentence in the Bible that Jesus wept. But the word used in the language the Bible was originally written in has a meaning that is as much angry as it is sad. Because Jesus sees the effect that death has on people and laments the fact that something the Bible calls sin which is estrangement from God, results in death. Jesus came into the world to turn that situation around, something Christians are thinking about particularly this week as we near the day called Good Friday, when we remember Jesus dying on the cross to reverse the effects of that sin and make a way for us to go back to God. The evidence for which was made abundantly clear in the discovery that first Easter Sunday, that Jesus' tomb was empty because he'd risen, triumphing over sin and death and hell for all, for everyone who would believe in him. Before this miracle, there had been another instance of someone being raised from death because Jesus called for his dead friend Lazarus to come out of the tomb that he'd been in. And lo and behold, he does. Lazarus, who was dead, is now alive. And the news of this miracle spreads like wildfire. These days, we'd probably say it went viral. And people are amazed. But that doesn't please everybody. Jesus' enemies become even more determined to stop Jesus because he's seen as being a threat to their own power and the control they exert over the people. So as you probably know, they kill Jesus and they likely think they've seen the last of him and his followers. But we know different. You see, Jesus' death wasn't a tragedy, no matter how terribly sad it must have seemed at the time. It was God's plan to rescue a world that had largely turned its back on him. God was able to use evil for good in a way that's beyond our ability to understand. And God's plan in sending Jesus to die on a cross as the perfect sacrifice for our sins to restore this broken relationship between ourselves and God is a mystery we'll never be able to fathom. And standing at a graveside saying the words, I'm the resurrection and the life, you might think, who's he kidding? But these are the words of hope that Jesus has given us. These are the words which overturn seemingly un insurmountable odds in declaring that one day we shall be with God in his everlasting kingdom where there'll be no more death or mourning or crying or pain because the old order will have passed away. Why am I telling you this? Well, this day, if you're feeling sad, angry, sore, bewildered, however you are feeling, all mixed in with gratitude for knowing, having known Johnny and having shared this life with him, however you're feeling. My prayer is that Jesus, who died for you, will meet you exactly 
where you need him to be in your life right now. And just as he changed the weeping of Good Friday into the joy of Easter Sunday, that he will give you hope in place of despair, light in place of darkness, peace in place of anxiety, and life in place of death. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now turn to prayer, a prayer of thanksgiving for Johnny's life and also a prayer for those who will miss him most because they loved him best. Let us pray. We bless you, Lord, that Jesus came into a home like ours and knew the loyalties and tensions of family living, that he worked as a carpenter and knew the frustrations and fulfillment of a daily task, that he offered friendship and knew how it might be a source of healing and courage at a time like this, that he went about doing good even at the risk of being misunderstood that he brought glory to ordinary tasks and relationships and dignity to every human being. Above all, we bless you that Jesus went to the lonely place carrying his cross. He died for us, confronting all that threatened to destroy us, that he came back from death, making us more than conquerors and showing that death shall not have dominion and that he leads us into his kingdom to share with him the life everlasting. Because he's been with us, we shall be with him. Because he's been like us, we shall be like him. Because he is for us, who can be against us? Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Eternal God, you hold all souls in life And we praise you for those who share this earthly life with us. Especially we thank you for Johnny, for all that made him special, all that you gave him and accomplished in him. All that he meant and still means to those who've known and loved him. We remember with gratitude Johnny's life for his friendliness and helpfulness, for his love of people and family and what that love and friendship means to so many here. We trust in your unending mercy and commend Johnny to your care. Father and God and Father of us all, by all your dealings with us, whether of joy or sorrow, bring us closer to one another and to you. Help us to walk amid the things of this world with our eyes wide open to your glory. Make us sure in every sorrow that you're still loving us. Sure in every darkness that you're still guiding us. Sure in death that you're giving us life forevermore. Gracious God, sustain and support those whose love for Johnny was dearest, whose loss is greatest. To your loving care, we commend those who mourn, especially Aileen, David and Gillian, Barbara and Martin, Andrew, Lucas, and Rebecca, Gavin, Bill, Adrian, Malky, and other close friends. May they find beyond their tears unclouded visions of your love, and may they see beyond their darkness the clear shining of your light. Set their troubled hearts at rest, banish all their fears, and hold them in the comfort of your peace. God of all comfort in the midst of pain, Heal us with your love. In the darkness of sorrow, shine upon us as the morning star. Awaken in us the spirit of mercy that as we feel the pain of others, we may share with them the comfort we receive from you. And bring us at the last with all your people into the kingdom of your glory where death itself is ended and every tear is wiped from every eye. To you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be glory both now and for all eternity. Amen. And let us now say together the prayer 
that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our concluding hymn is Abide With Me. And I will tell you the number of it just in a moment. I think it's... Where were we? Number four. If you're using one of the hymn books, it's number four. Again, stand to sing as you're able. brother Johnny to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Let us pray. Gracious God, by your power you gave us life 
And in your love, you're giving us new life in Jesus Christ. We entrust Johnny to your safekeeping. In the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who died and rose again to save us and to bring us to a joyful resurrection and the glory of your eternal kingdom. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. Amen. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Before the blessing, uh, can I thank you on behalf of the family for your attendance here today and for the love and support you've shown them at this sad time. Following the committal, they ask you to join them at the Loch Winnock Golf Club for refreshments and to share fond memories of Johnny. And now, the blessing. The peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, guard your hearts and thoughts in Christ Jesus. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love now and forevermore. Amen.
dungeons dark and strong. The wretch's destiny, Macpherson's time will no be long. Any under gallows tree. It was born.